Hello and uh, welcome one and all. Today we will carry on with the data streaming series. In this session, we will develop a real-time data analysis app using Streamlit. In the previous video, we set up a ClickHouse database and configured a JDBC sync connector that streams Kafka topic data to a sales table in ClickHouse. We will utilize this table as our source and run a continuous query to pull and display this data in a visual form. There was a question about the ClickHouse JDBC setup, so we'll address that today. Since we're using Debezium, we can open the Debezium container and all the connectors drivers are under Kafka and Connect folder. By default, we'll see Postgres, SQL Server, and MySQL and few other folders here. We will create a new folder for ClickHouse using the same naming convention. And in this folder, we copy the Debezium jars. You can grab them from one of the existing folders. I copied them from the DB2 and paste them in the ClickHouse folder. Furthermore, we copy the ClickHouse JDBC jar in this folder as well. You can download the driver from Maven's website. I will leave the link in the description below. In addition, we copy and paste the ClickHouse JDBC jar in the libs folder as well. So this covers the setup of the JDBC jar. And without a further ado, let's dive into the app development. We'll set up our database first. Debezium pushes the data from Kafka to our table in UTC time zone. Since I'm in Eastern time zone, I'll convert it to Eastern with the help of a view. If you are in UTC time zone, then there's no need for this conversion. I will create a view that selects from our sales table. Let's select ID and create it add column. We take left 23 characters from it and we are replacing certain characters from this string. Using the to date time 64 function, we convert it to America, New York time zone. Since this time zone is four hours behind, we will subtract four hours from it. This gives us the correct date time. Let's convert this into a CTE and join it back to our sales table on the ID column. From the CTE, we select the created at date in addition, we create a column that gives us the current date time. Let's go ahead and execute this script to create this view. Our database setup is complete. Now let's develop the Streamlit app to consume this data. I have a new Python file open. I've named it app.py. In this file, we will develop a Streamlit application. As usual, Let's import our libraries at the top. We will use Streamlit, Pandas, and SQL Alchemy to code this application. Let's establish the connection to the database. We can encapsulate this in a try accept block to catch any exceptions. The connection string is as follows. Clickhouse colon forward slash forward slash username server and then the database. We create a connection and then a session. Next, we have the page detail, for example, page layout and the title. With the help of date time now, we display the last updated date of the application. Following this, we provide the delay time between each refresh. We set the default time to five seconds. You can change it to your liking. Then we set the session state and auto refresh to true. Following this, we define the refresh mapping. We display this on the app so a user can select different refresh rate based on their needs. This section is leveraged from Mark Needham's app on this topic. If you want to explore more examples on real-time data analysis, then you can look him up. We have a selection from five to 60 minutes. Now we can set user selection for the app. We set the two layout columns. In the left column, we display the auto refresh enable disable option. If auto refresh is enabled, then we display the session sleep time and set the value for it. In the right column, we display the mapping for the data window. 
For example, if you want to display data for the last five minutes, we grab the user selection value for the data window. Then we have the SQL query, where we pass in the selected data window interval and select a few metric to display in our app. We filter the data for the selected window. For example, if five minutes are selected, then we only display data for the past five minutes. And we are using create a date in the where clause to filter out the data. We use pandas to execute our SQL and save it in a data frame. We define three columns to display our three KPIs. For the first metric, we display the number of transactions. In the second, we display the number of orders. And finally, in the third, the sales amount. Following this, we display the data in a line chart using Streamlit's built-in charts. We display the sales by the created date. In addition, let's also display the data frame. So this is our Streamlit application. In the end, we check the auto refresh, and if enabled, we rerun the app. Keep in mind, this is an experimental feature, so in the future, it may be renamed to rerun. If you get an error here, please check the Streamlit documentation and use the updated naming convention here. Let's save the app and give it a try. Our app is up and running. However, we are not streaming any data yet, so we don't see anything on the display yet. Let's bring up our script that inserts the data in the streaming source table. Also make sure your Kafka services are up and running. Okay, we have data streaming enabled and we can see the data flowing to our Streamlit application. We have successfully built a real-time data analysis app using our data streaming setup. We can change the interval for our analysis and change the duration of the refresh in the application. This was a really fun project and I'm really happy the way it came out. I hope you enjoyed it too. This is all for now on data streaming. Like, share and subscribe. Take care and I'll see you in the next video.